Good day. Welcome to another episode of A Drink with the Booster. My name is Apuye Tosani Mawela, also known as the Booster. So we are still celebrating Africa Month and uh, today we have a lady who left her motherland and found Africa too and is now calling Africa her own um, new home and has raised a, ch- a child in Africa and uh, it's good to be enjoying Africa a lot. Uh, talking about Lucy, who is to many known as the Blue Mistress, a uh, famous beer blogger. Hi, well, Lucy, how are you? I am pretty well, thanks. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So, are uh, we having a drink with a booster? So, you tell me what you're having first before we start talking too many other things. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pour now. Uh, I have got a um, slice of life uh, from. Okay from Woodstock. Oh my goodness, and I've poured it into a dirty glass. What will Ghani say? <laughs> um, so everything I'm gonna say, everything I'm gonna say about Lucy being um, a sommelier, the first one in Africa, uh, the, the lover of beer, <laughs> and she goes and pours it. <laughs> yeah, pour into a dirty glass. <laughs> Broken all the beer rules. <laughs> You see, I, you know, when I took it out of the cupboard, I thought this is a dangerous thing to do because these glasses are really hard to clean. Um, but oh, okay. I was trying to give some beer love to a little brewery in Cape Town, you know, Shield, oh, yeah. great company. So a lot of my glasses are, uh, they're all branded, you know, and a lot of them are international brands. So I was trying to give a little love to a local backfire. Okay. Tell, tell us more about the beer you have in. I actually don't remember how it is. Um, it's Session IPA. Uh, with like a twist of lemon, you know, it's got, I think it's actually got lemon rinds. To be honest, I can't remember exactly what, um, <laughs> this one Woodstock Brewery in, in, in Cape Town. I'll just have a taste and let you know. Okay, so today I'm giving my shout out to MP Brewing Company, um, and I'm having their homestead lager. Uh, it's a very nice beer. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> This is my first beer of the day and it's 29 degrees in Cape Town, so it's perfect. Mm. I haven't got my, I haven't got a brewery shirt on today, but I thought since it was Africa month, I've got my... Ah! Woo! <laughs> There's so much fun because I'm sitting too close to the screen. I can't reach my beer if I sit further back. <laughs> so, um, tell us a bit about yourself. I think I did a bit, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of people are watching for me you but uh, for those who, who have not come across you who's Lucy and how do you get into brewing um, and then we'll talk about how you got to be in South Africa. So I'm originally from the UK as you can probably everybody can probably tell. Uh, I've been in South Africa for almost 10 years now um, and yeah I'm, I, I used to be, well I still am although in the current climate I, I was I started off as a travel writer as you can imagine. Yeah. That profession is not an ideal profession right now with all, every plane in the world. <laughs> um, but no, I've been working as a travel writer for probably ooh, five or five years, something like that by the time I moved to South Africa. And I, I thought, okay. you know, I'm, I'm going to have to um, diversify. And I'd actually got quite into homebrewing. Uh, we used to live in South Korea and we got very involved in the homebrewing community there. And then when we moved to South Africa, you know, you could just see craft beer was, this is 2010, you could see it was just going to take off. We'd just seen the same thing happen in Korea. And I originally I thought maybe I'll do a, um, a wine blog or write about, you know, food blog or do wine writing because I love eating and drinking basically. <laughs> um, but you know, there's lots of food bloggers already. There's lots of people who know a lot more about wine, but nobody was writing in Korea at all. So. Um, yeah, I, I just I started doing a little blog for for um, Getaway magazine, and then it just grew and grew. And uh, yeah, it's it took off in a way I would never really have. It was supposed to be a sideline, you know. I used to say I used to be a travel writer who occasionally drinks beer. And now I'm a beer writer who sometimes travels. <laughs> <laughs> but now just now you're able to combine the two, um, write and travel and, sit, uh, and drink beer. So travel to breweries and write about breweries. Um, and you recently travelled to Rwanda also, which is, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about your travels through Africa for later. Okay. 
Um, I think for me, the, I remember the first time I think I've met you was at the 2011 Cape Town Festival of the Arts. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I always and think, I think the first, was, it, was it that or was it the um, was it called? InterVarsity? Was it InterVarsity? Hmm. I don't know. It was that year anyway. It was but definitely I think, yeah, I think that's for me, that's a, that's a alias memory. And I remember, and why I remember that is because I think you were you were going around tasting every single beer and, and and busy on Twitter about every single person beer. And, and I was like, and at that time I was not even on Twitter. I was like, who is this person? <laughs> that was a fun person. He's gonna tweet about every person's beer. And <laughs> that was it. I said. So the, the organizer Martin put it out on Twitter and said, you know, challenge someone to take every beer in, on, on the show. And I was like, oh, I'll do it and I'll go on better. I'll tweet a review. Oh, I did regret it about halfway through day one. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, there were only tasters, right? And there, I think there was about 105 yeah. beers over three days. And there were only tasters. But having to keep track of which ones you've tasted and then having to remember to do a little review of each one, it got really... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I stuck with it. I'm a person who sticks with things, you know, I don't, I don't like to give up. And then by the end I was like, yes, I, I, I don't know what kind of achievement that really is, but I was quite pleased with myself. <laughs> <laughs> you missed a few things in your intro, actually, uh, for those who don't know you, I know you. Um, uh, that Lucy is, uh, uh, you've written two books I have. about VI in South Africa. Um, the first one was African Blue and then the Aspiring. That's right, yeah, it kind of came about really, um, so like I say, I started off doing the blog for Getaway My Queen, and then I was approached by a photographer, Reno, who I'd met in the homeroom called the South Easters in Cape Town, and he wanted to do a book, and he'd been reading my blog, and he's a photographer and was looking for a writer. So we ended up doing the, the first book together, and then the second book I did by myself. Yeah, and it was, it's, it was just really all sort of, what do they say? Life is what happens when you're making your plans or something like that. You know, it's like <laughs> not an open plan in any way. And I ended yeah. up then moving the blog to my own, to, to the brewmistress. Uh, the blog yeah. started off being called the Tipsy Traveller, so it wasn't supposed to just be beer. It was supposed to be like fun, you know, if there was a cool uh, wine pairing thing or a whiskey tasting or whatever. Oh. But Getaway at the time kept saying, write more about beer. The beer ones are getting the hits. Everybody wants to write about, oh, to read about beer because no one else is writing about it. So it ended up being just about beer. And then, you know, I moved it to my own uh, to my own URL. And yeah, I think it's been going now on that. It must, it must be about five years now, I think, for the yeah. Brewmaster's website. No, I think anybody that's um, watching us today and wants to know anything about craft beer in South Africa, where we're we going, where we come from, who's done what, who's doing what way, and and, and um, I would highly recommend that uh, it's just well. Not because Lucy is my friend, but uh, because I think it's <laughs> it's a few uh, pl blog blogs that we have that centered around craft beer, but I do think that it's one of the best. Thank you. I do. I do. I do spend a lot of time trying to find out, you know, minding other people's business, trying to find out what's going on. And the brewers are very, they're not very forthcoming sometimes. They'll have this great oh, excitement. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't well, tell I you all the truth. I would deny it as by till the last day. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also edit uh, on tap. Indeed, yeah. Yep, so on tap. I'm, doing your intro. I'm doing your bio for you now. <laughs> I, I, I'm not very good at that. I hate like when people say when I write. So I do freelance writing for other publications as well. But internationally, yeah. whenever you have to write a bio of yourself, I just I don't like it. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's awkward, isn't it? But yeah, on tap's yeah. been going now for we're on issue 16, so we must be coming into fourth year because it's quarterly, um, which is crazy. Like how quickly it's it gone. Yeah, uh, 2016, I think it was. Because I remember I met Andrew. Yeah, I think we started talking about it in 2015, and the first issue was I think July or September um, 2016. I have to do my math now to make sure that's right. But um, yeah, well, at the beginning I was like, oh, wow, is there enough material to fill the magazine and to keep doing my blog? And yes, there is. I'm pleased to say. So the magazine's been been growing, and you know, I think it's just got better and better. Um, with you know getting a bigger and bigger following, we're kind of branching out a little bit more, doing more food stuff as well to, to bring in people who are 
interested in food beverage in general. And it's still always going to be primarily beer focused. But yeah, to, to try and attract it and then and then to convince all of those people to just drink craft beer. <laughs> that's the that's the end goal, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, please please check out on Tech Magazine. Uh, are you guys online or are you just doing print? Yeah, so of course we've always been a print magazine. Um, and then usually the e version just goes out to subscribers. But the last uh, issue, which came out in March, is freely available for everybody to download on, uh, oh, yes, on yes, yes, yes. I think I shared it also. Yeah, I also and shared it on uh, Mr's Craft page, when you on, on our group also. Uh, but also you can find on tap on Facebook, uh, I think it's on tap magazine, and on Twitter, and uh, I think you guys are on Insta and LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the the June issue, so the next the winter issue comes out in June, first week of June, and that also will be. It's only going to be an e issue because we can't print at the moment because we have no distribution channel with the lockdown. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's going to be online. And it'll be freely available for everybody to download. And we've got some pretty cool stuff coming in. Can't say what yet, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah, so there, there you had it. It's all free. I'm sure people are um, anything anything free at this point. Mm. Money is a bit tight um, with the lockdown and everything. So anyway, let's just talk about um, this young lady from from the UK who's married to a Canadian who at some point stayed in South Korea. Somehow found this <laughs> found a way into Africa and South Africa. Why? Why did you guys choose to do that? So we actually met in Africa, Sean and I. So oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. We met, we met in Egypt. Um, okay. What are you guys doing? We were traveling, so we actually met. We both signed up to the same overland trip, so it's like a truck okay. camping through Africa. We happened to be on the same trip, so it was a uh, Cairo to Cape Town. That's why our son is called Kai because he met in Cairo. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and we we traveled. It was about I think four and a half months um, through East Africa and then cut across and through Zim, uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe and uh, Botswana and then down through Namibia to South Africa. And so I had been traveling on and off for quite a, you know, I've got a massive passion for travel. And Sean was also in the middle of a, of a trip. He'd been working in the UK and traveling around Europe. And when we got to, we both just got like really itchy feet, didn't want to stay anywhere. When we got to South Africa, we traveled around in South Africa, I think it was for about nine months. Um, I was actually writing a guidebook on South Africa at the time, so we were traveling around doing that. And then when we left, we traveled in Asia and stuff, and, and we were always ready to move on. You know, it was always like, okay, we've seen this place now, cool, let's go. You know, sometimes it's a matter of days, weeks, or in some places, months. And we were always ready for like the that next... Was the life, huh? It was it was pretty awesome, hey. Right? Now now it feels like I feel, I feel so glad that I've done that stuff just in case we can never travel again. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> when we um when we left Cape Town specifically, but when we no no that's not true. When we left South Africa, we were like mm-hmm. even though we travelled longer in South Africa I think than any other country we've been to together, we didn't feel ready to leave. And Cape Town was stuck in our minds. And, and so when we were, we, we then we went to South. That's why we went to South Korea to pay off all the debt that we just racked up um, traveling. Big, big debt. Um, and then you know we we went to Canada for a while, where Sean's from, but it's too cold. And um, um, but in the back of our mind, it was always I'd really like to live in Cape Town for a while. You know, how can we live in Cape Town for a while? Then Sean wanted to do his master's degree, and he applied it to, um, at UCT, and he got got a place. So we actually originally came for a year, and that was in 2010. <laughs> and it was, you know, he ended up getting a job at the university, and so we stuck around. And then we, I remember we sat down and we had this like, are we staying or are we going to move on? You know, he's like, am yeah. I accept the job or are we going to move on? I was like, well, why would we be? You know, we've, we've, I'd started doing the, the beer writing thing, and we've made a lot of friends, and, and he was doing well in his job. Well, why would we be? The place is beautiful, the people are awesome. So we just stayed. <laughs> and, um, like you said, we've had a child here. He's he's a um, he's a confused child in a way because if you ask him, he's South African, right? He was born here. He's yeah. from Cape Town. Yeah. He's South African, but he has a British passport. And, and like, actually, if he has to fill in his nationality, he's British because he can't get a South African passport. So he'll be a confused child growing up, I'm afraid. So, but what is it that, like if you look back? 
um, I think you touched it briefly. Like, what is it about South Africa that made you say, "Oh, this we can do"? It, it was it like, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this is it for like the longest time. You were still planning to stay. <laughs> this is this is the plan. Yeah, unless it all goes wrong after the whole. So, yeah, ignore the other ministers and all the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it would, be, it would be more from a financial point of view, probably. But um, I don't know, do you know what? It's a combination of things. In South Africa is one of these like um, full package kind of places. So it, it's the massive diversity, whether that's in like languages, cultures, food, landscape, just everything. And you, you can't get bored because there's just so much going on all the time. You know, the, the, the kind of, I don't know how to describe, but the, the the way people, how do I, how to explain it? We are, the, we are nice people. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, the way people live with like a love of life and stuff, you know, I'm like, I don't know, being outside and, and whether you're like having a braai on the street or, or whatever it is, this kind of, a, I don't know, this love of music. Latin America has a similar feel, you know, this kind of, whereas I'm from, you know, Northern Europe, it's very sort of, you keep yourself to yourself and you're, it's not a, like we're not a hugging country. South Africa is a hugging country, or it was before when we were still allowed to hug. Um, but yeah, we'll, just, we'll be to it. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. I'm gonna hug people. Um, it's just like a whole combination of things that we like. I don't know. We, we um, sometimes we have people come visit and they say, "Oh no, it's not really anything I want to do because I've been to Cape Town before." And we're like, "I've been here for ten years, and there's still stuff to do, even in the city, let alone like an hour outside the city or across the rest of the country." It just this I mean, of course, you know, there are some issues in South Africa, but I think the, the good far outweighs the bad for me. You know, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Everybody has got their wages. Exactly. And, 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 and you travel through the continent. Um, if you were not, if you had not settled in South Africa, where would you have settled? Um. So Namibia is a really beautiful country. I'm putting it on the spot there. Oh, it's Namibia. I thought that's like, like a province in South Africa. Sorry? Oh, another <laughs> province in South Africa. You know, my favorite province, my favorite province is not the Northern Cape. It's not the Western Cape, it's the Northern Cape. I love the Northern Cape. Um, if I was going to buy a second house, if I could afford to buy a house, um, yeah. I would love to buy a place in Sutherland. It's my favorite town in South Africa. And it needs a brewery. Okay. I, this, oh, I yes. think it's... Hey? No, no, I'm listening to you. Okay, um, no, it's just, uh, again, I think that coming from a country that's very small, very overpopulated, you know, I mean, our population is bigger than the population of South Africa, except you can fit the UK like into the Kruger or something. I, I, there's some kind of statistic like this. <laughs> and, so, you know, to give you, so you're on top of, of each other. And, and we've also got such awful weather that you very rarely sort of see the sky. Oh, oh, oh. And, and the, um, the Northern Cape for me has this like 180 degree horizon everywhere. You can just see sky everywhere and there's so much space. You can drive for five hours and not see anything. Yeah. So, I don't think Sean would live there. Uh, but I, I well, would... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, talking about um, traveling through Africa, any... Obviously you've tried all the years. I'm sure you went. Um, you tried most of the beers in Africa, if not all of them. Have you? I have. Or not we, you know, at the time I was so I was always a beer drinker, like through university. You know, people in the UK, we are a nation of beer drinkers. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't a real. It, funnily enough, it was actually Sean who got me interested in, in English ales. So he'd been working in a pub in the UK, and he got really interested in real ale. So in the UK okay. at the time, the craft beer wasn't really a. Um, I th- well, it wasn't a thing then. I, have, I haven't lived in the UK since 2001. So, oh. um, so craft beer wasn't a thing. And then the real ales were always thought of as being like an old man drink, you know, like boring old man. So it wasn't really something I'd ever been interested in. And then, um, where I don't even know where, I'm trying to think where we went to our first microbrewery together. It was probably in South Africa, actually. But we started tasting all the beers. I remember we did a brewery tour, a big brewery in Ethiopia. Um, it was great. Like they, they showed us the, the they did the tour, and then we just sat and drank beer in the beer garden. It was the it was the Dasham Brewery in the north of Ethiopia, you know. And it was it was just such a good time. Good beers. 
Um, and I think that's where, you know, we just started getting interested in it. At the time, we, when we traveled through Africa, it was 2005. So, you know, Whoa. there were no craft breweries outside South Africa at that time. So it was tasting a lot of lagers and, you know, which is what you want a lot of the time, you know, if you're near the equator, we were near the equator in summer. You want <laughs> And, and now that you, you've been, because we have access to some of the beers, so anything else that has... And now obviously with all the craft brewers that are opening up, of course, I know I'm putting you on the spot and you probably... Yeah. Your ratings will drop because now you mentioned you, you like one over the other and then and. <laughs> well, I, I haven't even tasted enough of the, of the craft breweries around Africa to say. I was in Botswana last year at Big Sip. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really enjoyed the golden ale um, and yeah I've tasted some of the beers from um, well when people entered the African Beer Cup last year you know I can't judge because I know what the beers are but I was tasting things in the background and um, some of the beers from um, there were a couple of beers from uh, Nigeria and a couple of beers from I think Namibia I think there were some from Tanzania yeah, there were. I think there were the there were SCB beers. From, oh no, because we had Crafty D's as well. Oh, yeah, so like, awesome. um, yeah, we'd actually got this whole plan in March. We were supposed to be going at the end of March. We were supposed to be going to Kenya and to Nairobi. We were going to do just some because you know I've done a bunch of different like tasting events and staff training, and we were trying to set that up with some of the craft brewers in in. Kenya because I feel like Kenya is the next place where it's going to take off, you know, the way it's taken off in South Africa. Kenya will be next. And then it's something like, they've got, um, don't they have like two or three at the moment? There might even be a few more than that, but scattered around. And then there's three in, in Nairobi and there's one just outside. Nairobi, yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's a few setting up there, but of course we couldn't go. So that's kind of on my list now. Um, I really want to get back into Africa and, and you know, a lot has happened in beer since I last sort of traveled through the continent. The time my list of things to do. Yeah, it's also on my, uh, but I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm <in> my knee. <laughs> so I can, no. I, I can be your, um, I'll carry your suitcases, it's fine. And, well, and I'll hope we're, we're, yeah. Let's tell people we're both open to sponsorship because I don't have any money now either. <laughs> to be honest, so if anybody's good. listening and they have some, cash lying around somewhere and they would like to sponsor this um these two ladies who love beer so much that they would love to check out the beers in africa you know it's good it's good it's for the betterment of the <laughs> of, of everything there's definitely a tv show in this if you will we need to yeah. look into it <laughs> and in traditional beer uh, i know you, i mean yes have you written a few Blogs around um, Gombo tea and the traditional African beers. Uh, I think I'm going to put you on another spot. What was your first impression of the beers? Well, actually, when did you first taste like, your tea, African traditional beers and what was your impression? The first time I tasted it was actually before we lived here, before I traveled, before I met Sean, um, and I'd come to Cape Town with a friend. Um, I think it was 2004, I would guess. And we did the typical, you know, the township tour in Cape Town and then they give you kind of options. Do you want to do this, this, and, and you know, I, I'm always been a foodie person. I'm very interested in local foodstuffs and drinks. I was like, oh no, no, I'd like to do the beer tasting. It wasn't what I expected at all. I'm not going to lie. I did not really enjoy it very much. Um, it was like, it wasn't even from, from my I don't know actually. I have no idea. I guess I expected beer as, you know, like beer as, as I had, I had known it. Um, I really don't know, but then there was this like big silver bucket that we passed around and I was like, oh my goodness, what have I got into here? Um, <laughs> and then um, after Sean and I, I think it was when we were still traveling around before we'd actually moved here, um, which was then in like 2007, 2008. And um, we were in the Eastern Cape uh, on the Wild Coast and we met some people who worked in the backpacker hostel we were staying in and then we went to Shabin with them. And Sean, in fact, got really like he was drinking it by the carton, um, and he was, you know, he got an I, I, I couldn't get past the sourness of it. We actually did a tour of the brewery. Um, what's it called? The one just outside Durban. The big, the must be in United Breweries. Oh no, United um, Latin Breweries. 
Hmm. Uh, just outside Devon. So we, we actually did a tour of it years ago. I wrote a, an article about different breweries around KZN. And this was like 2007. And we did the tour and, you know, and he gave us some for tasting. And I was still not sure. The first time I actually willingly went back for another sip was last year in Botswana. So the guys from yeah. Big Sip had got some Chibuku Shake Shake for me. And I was like, oh, here we go, you know. And then and, and I was then thinking, I'm just going to take a little sip, be polite, and then, you know, we'll just casually start. And I took a sip and I was like, huh. And I took another sip, another sip. I was like, I'm going to get my notebook and take some notes on this. I'm going to write a review of it. And I think what had changed yeah. is because I'm more accustomed to sour beer styles now. So the, the sourness is, like, I think sourness of people like business can be quite an off-putting flavor. And now because I, you know, I, I enjoy sour beers, then it wasn't such a, obviously it's a very different style of beer, you know, the texture and, and the, you know, the, the, the lack of carbonation stuff, it's still a very different, different beer, but that sourness I actually quite enjoyed. So yeah, then we sat around actually drinking it rather than just tasting it. And, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, then you, you are, you are like really now in Africa, now that you, can sit and drink a full carton. You finished the whole carton, eh? Oh, not by myself, eh? That'll be the next step. And then you also made some for yourself at home uh, for National Beer Day. You made some community. Yeah, well, we did, we did oh, our yeah. thing last day, and uh, it was actually Nola made it on National Beer Day, but then she sort of shared her recipe with you us. You made some at home, did you not? Yeah, that was, oh, after. That was after. Yeah, so she shared the recipe, and then oh. um, we, we had a challenge with the Home Brewing Club. To, you know, to because so I've been involved with the Southeasters basically since I arrived. Literally, we went to our first Southeasters meeting ten days after we arrived in South Africa. It was Sean's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> was going to a home brew club meeting, and, <laughs> and you know, I mean, from that we started there, and then he ran the club for a year. Then I was on the committee for four years or something like that, and I'm still involved. And not once in that ten years can I remember ever doing anything with. With, a, with traditional sorghum beer, you know, never, not not in any way. So I was like, well, why don't we do that? Like, let's try and get a little bit of, you know, cross-cultural stuff going on here, because it's ridiculous yes. that we're everyone's crazy about brewing, we've got this whole new beer culture going in South Africa, but there's this ancient beer culture that no one's paying any attention to, well, not no one, but, you know, in the in the beer nerd circles. So yeah, we did yeah. the challenge. Um, it, was, it was really entertaining, the challenge, because um, it was <laughs> We were, you know, you know what it's like the first time you do a home group, but it was like that because none of us had any idea what to expect. So it, was like, what does yours, it was like, what does yours look like today? Can you send me a photo? <laughs> send me a video. What's yours do? What does yours smell like? My smell? And it was so, like, it was really a great experience and we had a lot of fun with it. And then I, the, hope, um, I think I, I love that and because uh, I'm actually also I'm part of the, uh, the witch of the job with me home for a And I did take some a few years ago and also got like the reactions. But I do think that it's something that um, that, that style of beer that we somehow have to integrate. Because it's part of, of who we are in, in Africa. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm very passionate about about that yeah. style of beer that it must, it must not disappear. You know, and as, as we progress with beer styles and move forward, it's something that I feel we should take with. And I'd love to see Homebrew Club meet um, Competitions, even your Africa Cup, I think it's the best, but there's room to have that style integrated in some of these uh, brewing competitions. And talking about Africa Brew Cup before we, African Beer Cup, sorry, uh, before we end, um, how, that, uh, tell us about that, what's the story there, how long have you been running it, what's, uh, what was the reasoning behind it, and how has it been so far? It was actually uh, credit where it's due with Sean's um, idea. He wanted to, you know, I mean, we both judged in a lot of competitions. Um, we actually, the first time we judged was when we lived in South Korea. I had no idea what we were doing. You know, we were looking at the sheet, didn't understand half the words on there, probably. Um, and then we've, we've both judged a lot in South Africa and organized a lot of competitions. And every time um, Sean uh, was involved in a competition, whether from judging or sometimes entering, and not just South African competitions, in other countries as well. And he was like, oh, I feel like there's a, another way of doing this. I feel like there's a, a you know, a more, because uh, the problem with, with judging food stuffs or drinks is it's so, it, it's subjective. And it doesn't matter how much you try for, you know, beer judging is not supposed to be because it's done to style, but always it's going to come into it. And sometimes you'll get feedback and like, 
you know, for three people, one person said it was too bitter and the other person said it wasn't bitter enough. And you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. So his idea was to do a competition where, well, for a start, there was no Pan-African, a uh, like regular sort of annual Pan-African competition. Every other continent had one, apart from us. Um, and he wanted to do a competition where everything gets judged twice to try and eliminate that, that or not eliminate, but to really narrow down that possibility for like a judge having a bad day or not understanding the style or, you know, um, yeah. So yeah, we, we started working on it in 2018, I guess, and it was a whole year of you know, fact finding and, and working things out and trying to work out the you know the best way to uh, everything, shipping and scoring and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then the first inaugural actual competition was 2019. Um, we had I think it was about 145 entries. We we were hoping for our first year to get 100 entries and to just have one beer entered from outside outside South Africa. We were like, then it will be African, not just South African. And we ended up with 11 different countries. The and not counting them. And obviously not counting Namibia, Botswana, Swaziland, and... <laughs> we, we just wanted any country that wasn't South Africa. Any country. Like, if it had been South Africa and one beer from from Namibia, it would have been awesome. Yeah. The very, <laughs> very first entry came from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And we were like, yes! Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> love. We were so excited, you know. And then when yeah, we got, you know, IPAs entered from Nigeria, like, oh my goodness, this is a thing. And it was so much. Like, it was a lot of work. I expected it to be a lot of work. It was way more work than I expected. I was so like unprepared for how much work the logistics of organizing it, especially <clears throat> because we judged in Cape Town and Joburg and had to ship the beers there and back and. Um, but but the end and the I mean you were there on the awards night just that feeling in the room of like people celebrating each other's successes and stuff it, it still makes me all teary and especially since it should have been last weekend we should have had the awards last weekend but of course we've had to cancel yes. yeah. next year we will be back and bigger yes definitely twenty countries around Africa maybe <laughs> yeah yeah no it was a very good one and I think you guys must um, keep up with that thank you. So I would I then assume that would have been your way of celebrating Africa Month, the Africa, the whole organizing of the Africa Cup and um, hosting the event itself. I think that's your way of, unless I'm mistaken. No, so definitely. Were you, for, were you planning for something else for Africa Month? Uh, I mean, that, that was, it's kind of not being able to do the competition left me feeling a little bleak and sad because this year we know that some of the brewers from other African countries were going to be here as well, you know, because there's, there's nothing like actually being there on a woods night to be able to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> um, I think to eat you know, I, I at the last at the last was it last year's one, yes, um, and just drinking all the the beers from like like you said from Nigeria, and I thought and I thought it would have been so nice if you meet the, the brewer or meet somebody from the city from the and just. Kind of network and, and kind of see what other people are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd had, we'd already had entries from quite a few different African countries and different ones to, to last year as well, like new, new countries entering. But we've, you know, everyone's had their refunds and then hopefully they'll enter again next year. So for, for Africa Day itself, I think I might plan a trip, a, a dream trip that one day I'll be able to go on. <laughs> I'll get my, my Africa map out and look at places that even look right here at hand. Got my book. <laughs> <laughs> no, then you, you must have it's an emergency trip in planning. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time, Lucy. I think um, that was a, a great session. Um, no, I was lovely chatting with you. you. We learned some new things about each other. Cheers. I don't know how to do a cheers on Zoom. Where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> At least my son didn't run it. So, it was, you know, it was at least my son didn't run it wearing a mask because he did that last time. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for tuning in. That was a dream with the Brewster, and we had a great chat with Lucy, who also goes by the Brew Mistress. Um, she's got a blog, she's written books, she's check out her stuff. Um, and she's also the editor of my so next week um, is on Monday, the 25th, is the actual Africa month. So we will always prepare a presentation on the beers of Africa, a bit of technical information. So please tune in for that.
Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.